Japan is sitting on a demographic time bomb. You might not notice it when you're wandering the streets of Tokyo, but the population here is about to collapse. Within a hundred years, two thirds of the nation's population will disappear. 127 million will fall to 44 million, the steepest drop in modern civilization. Birth rates are anemic, leading to a scarcity of children. And in this ethnically homogenous country, immigration is virtually non existent. In the meantime, Japan is aging rapidly, with the highest proportion of senior citizens in the world. All of this will reshape the world's second largest economy. And Japan as we know it may cease to exist. But there may be a uniquely Japanese solution. あの、日本人というのはね、それほどね、露骨にこう、排外的に外国人差別というのに向かわないんじゃないかなと比較的こう、融和的じゃないかなとは思ってますけれどもね、社会全体でね、あの、外国人と付き合い、それから外国人から学
of restaurants now that have these little vending machines right outside their doors and rather than being allowed to order inside, you, you've got to order outside, pay the money, you get these little coupons or tickets and they will process your order. And there's really very, very little human contact involved here. Vending machines are just one example of the Japanese acceptance, maybe even preference for mechanical rather than human service. Combine Japan's love of convenience and technology with its roots in animism, the belief that non-living things can possess a spirit, and you have a society poised to accept the company of robots. Dr. Shibata designed Paro to be used for pet therapy and as an easy to maintain companion for the elderly. All the body is covered by tactile sensor. So when I stroke Paro, Paro feels good. And the whiskers are also sensors. So Paro responds to the whiskers. My he doesn't touch. like it. He doesn't like it. <laughs> Paro has a learning function. Paro tried to be liked by the owner. So Paro gradually changed his character. Acceptance of a cuddly, arm-sized seal robot is one thing. But robots with human expressions and voice recognition may be the ultimate test of whether Japan can revolutionize what it means to be a functioning member of society. Saya works as a receptionist at the Tokyo University of Science. So she's telling me that uh, she can express a variety of human emotions that are going to be reflected on her face. So let me ask her how she's doing. Genki. Genki yo? Kanashin de. Baka. What did you say to her? I called her stupid. She got pissed. In order to realize the full potential of robotic Japanese, roboticists say they need to figure out if and how humans can communicate seamlessly with mechanical citizens. Saya's creator said that future generations of Saya will become accepted members of our workforce. What have you learned from, from Saya? その神様の多分中間ぐらいの感じを多分ああいうロボットに持つみたいです。で、それを見て僕が思ったのはもしかしたらああいうロボットは教育に使えるかもしれない。要は先生の代わりに使えるんじゃないかなと思って。I would actually be afraid of this teacher. The look of disgust and anger would be enough to compel me to pay attention and do my homework. One scientist who might crack the code on integrating humanoid robots into society at large is Dr. Hiroshi Ishiguro. It's, it's weird, it's, it's kind of creepy when you are when I'm super close to her, like this, just out of the corner of my eye using my peripheral. I mean, looks and feels like a real human being. Is there something that you're looking for in terms of my reaction to her? Yes, yes. And by checking the subject reactions, so we are evaluating the, uh, which behavior is important for human likeness. I can see how lonely men around the world, though, can be very happy with this robot. <laughs> Ishiguro has made a copy of himself, a robot he calls Gemini. So this is the real hair. Real hair, yeah. From, and, um, well, especially around here, this is my hair. <laughs> You're very, very busy. Uh -huh. You wanted a place, a way to be in two places at once. Yeah. You know, that is the way to use the technology, you know, so we can exist in multiple places. And this is very uncomfortable. I sat down with Dr. Ishiguro to discuss the difference between humans and robots. Please push my cheek with your finger. I, you know, I, I'll tell you one thing. I feel uncomfortable doing it. <laughs> so that's a measure of, of, of how realistic it is. If uh, my wife has uh, this 
the android at home and suppose that this robot is naturally moving, she can get the iron existing there. That is a, a kind of uh, and the meaning of a human presence. This is a feature for me. If you want, you know, you can have this kind of a feature. Since it rapidly develops from the ashes of World War II, Japan has led the world in all realms of technology, releasing gadgets, machines, and ideas that were ahead of their time. In many ways, this advanced but quirky society has been the closest thing to a vision of the future. But is it simply paving its own unique, distinctively Japanese path? Or is it once again showing us what the future might look like for all of us?